Ζουν. And we continue. Συνεχίζουμε, κυρίε και κύριοι, με τον Σωτήρι Γκοβό. Together with us, Σωτήρι Γκοβό, after a long time. And uh, of course, he's a Greek who works in Torino. He's an automobile designer and he's born in Athens in 1965. Sorry, Sotiris, to tell your age, they told me to do so. He studied in Greece and the United Kingdom and became known after his design of Toyota Yaris. Ladies and gentlemen, Sotiris Govos. Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, good afternoon to everybody. I have heard that we have to speak in English, I think, this conversation. If you have some questions later, please let me know in Greek as well. Well, this is a status of Yaris, as we can see here. My name is uh, Sotiris Kovos. I'm a car designer. Uh, it's a little bit different what uh, you are going to see later from uh, my other counterparts that they are maybe give uh, a presentation of something much more modern. Uh, car design is something uh, that uh, it has a three dimension, it's something very concrete, so it's not so digital, let's say, it's something that we can, we can touch somehow. Uh, well, uh, before I was Uh, explaining to Miss Betty uh, my experience, how I became a car designer. And he said that uh, it would be good for the public if uh, I could share this experience with you. So I say, okay, why not? If, uh, if you think that could be interesting to somebody or it gives some uh, motivation to some young people, why not? Uh, well, I come uh, from a family that ha has uh, nothing to do with uh, car design. It's uh, uh, normal people, they, they knew nothing about cars or about design as well. Uh, it, inside me, it grew up a great passion about rally cars. So, uh, thanks to Rally Acropolis, uh, came back from uh, 81, Rally Acropolis, and uh, uh, I took a pencil and a pen without any, any other reason, let's say, unconsciously, we can say, and uh, I designed, or oh, I designed, I, I made the first sketch, let's say, it was an Audi Quattro of Michel Mouton, a black one, that was disqualified as well. Well, uh, this uh, passion for uh, rally cars, it uh, followed me for uh, all the life, even today, but uh, it followed me drawing cars the next uh, three, four years, so When I was almost uh, around 16 years old, a friend of mine said, Ma, since you're spending your time designing cars or making some rally cars, why you don't make some of your designs? I said, okay, why not? So I did the first uh, design, let's say. It was a, it's a pure copy, but anyway. It was a pure copy of a Mercedes uh, 100. Uh, it was a small Mercedes of the time. Uh, and then, I like it so much, so I continue making all the time uh, new concepts, new ideas, new drawings, etc., etc. So, since uh, in Greece we don't have got any tradition with car design, of course, and uh, I could not see any future on this uh, field, uh, I say, okay, let's uh, study something else. Uh, so I study sociology in the uh, University of uh, Athens, in Padios University, and uh, I was going on, uh, designing cars, even during the studies of my of the university times. Then the second year, I say, okay, what I want to be is car designer. Finish. So, let's finish, get a degree from the University of Athens, from sociology, and then we, we try to see if this could be a, the dream to fulfill, to be true. Anyway, the things have gone to the right way. That means that uh, I did my military service, and then I said, okay, let's go out. So I went out uh, in England, and uh, I studied car design. Uh, why I say all of this story, or why they ask me to say this story? Because I think that uh, the young people, what we need to... The young people, they need to follow their heart, basically. And uh, they need to see that uh, 
if they think that they look impossible, somehow there is a possibility to be possible. Maybe not uh, all the people that they can realize their dreams, but I think that uh, it's worth trying and not giving up from the very beginning. So, coming back to, to our uh, subject of today, and it has to do with some uh, design. So, I would like to, <coughs> since, since I study uh, sociology, as I said before, I have uh, uh, forced, uh, maybe, <laughs> um, a different approach to the, uh, to the design with my experience. So, just I go to the next, please go to the next uh, slide. Uh, unfortunately, it shows the psychical relationship. I would like to, to explain the physical relationship between person and uh, object. So, the point is how can we make a connection between our mind and uh, a product? I think this is very, very important because in the very end, we design for people and not design for ourselves. So, the objects are wrapped in an ideological content important for any one of it. Psychonomics is a science that examines how the human mind understands and copes with things in its environment. This is why we say sometimes that looking in the chair, if we judge that this chair is a beautiful chair, unconsciously we think that maybe this chair is a comfortable as well. The psychonomics is divided in uh, four aspects. First is the cognition. It is the process through which the peop mind people organize things in their mind. This is the level of the IQ talent and memory. Then is belief. The belief represents value and it creates a frame that we evaluate, experience and object. For example, wood in the interior of a car is always synonymous to luxury and prestige. Third is the language. The choice of symbols, grammar and logic create the architecture of thinking. It defines how we proceed through as correctly as roads define where we can drive our cars. Finally, the fourth one is the emotion that overlays the cognition, the belief, and the language. Adrian Forti, a professor of uh, architectural uh, history, wrote, designers have the capacity to cast our myths into a enduring, solid and tangible form, so that they seem to be reality itself. So basically, what is the design? To give uh, a shape of our, in our dreams. So, the above define the triangular relationship between designer, object and customer. So, I have read this uh, research I have done here because I, I, I had written this in uh, Greek and finally in Greek it, will not <laughs> it was not good like, uh, to, to, to use as a language for today. So, now we go back to our presentation. So, here again, the presentation is in Greek, but I will try to translate this as uh, close as possible. We go very back to the 80s, and uh, the time of the 80s, it was the most uh, ambiguous period of the design, and uh, it was a full expression of the unit, of the people, of the selfishness, we have the punk, high-tech, low-tech, most uh, uh, postmodern era. It's a period of the extremes. 
and uh, everybody likes to shock the others. And uh, that's why we have uh, a lot of uh, colors. And uh, the productionability, let's say, it was very, very high. Here we see some examples of this period of the 80s. Then we will go to the modern area, that uh, the people are tired from all of these constant changes. They are looking for more simplicity and uh, constructiveness. And uh, the design has to express more the essence of the object instead of the superficie superficiality. The designer has to understand the needs of the society and has to translate this into the three-dimensional objects. And uh, the word that expresses our modern society, I think, is the maturity. Which of the words that they express this maturity, the sense of maturity, is the simplicity, as we can see here, less is more, is the cultural, so we need to have an internal guidance of where we go that is coming from the past and is going somewhere in the future, so we need all the time to see the past in order to design the future, the quality, the quality has to be optical quality, uh, liturgic, um, functional, functional, uh, communicative. Then it is the identity, the human element into the objects that we have to put the human spirit inside the object. Then the materials that we use, and finally, of course, today it's very much in fashion, let's say, but it could not be in fashion because this is eternal, it has to, to, be, to take care of the environment. This is our Sibel of our modern area on design. I go back a little bit now, forward, not backwards. I go forward to see some examples of the car design that I feel more comfortable speaking. So here we have some uh, results of the cultural uh, memories, as I said before. So we see two cars here, the Fiat 500 and the Mini two cars that, uh, even if they have a design of uh, 50 years old or so, still they catch the imagination and they are successfully, uh, they have a, a great success in the market. That means something. Even in a product that, like, it, like a car, that it is <coughs> a, a technological product. But uh, what's happened with the other companies, maybe they don't have got any historical uh, references like uh, Mini and, uh, and Fiat. Still, we see new cars like the Fiat 500X, like the Renault Twingo or the Opel Adam. Of course, the Mini is growing up as well in the different sectors. And we see here that basically these companies, if they don't have got any reference of the past, still they are trying to find elements that they are creating a contact with the past. 
This is very, very important, I think. We see very clearly on the Opel Adam. Here we have other examples of this kind of directions. This is the, what we call the achronicota. That means like uh, uh, timeless, basically. So here we see the design of very modern cars, but uh, they have a design spirit and design language that it could be beautiful forever. We see the uh, Jaguar, the F-Type, that is using a lot of elements from the past. We see even the modern Jaguar, the SUV on the top right, and of course the most typical of everything is the Porsche. The Porsche that even if passed again 50 years old, it seems a product very, very acceptable and at the same time very modern. One element that's very, very important and it defines somehow the cars of today, it is the uh, proportions and the character. Here I have some uh, examples of cars that they have a lot of character, like the Audi A7 on the top left. We see this car, it cannot be defined as a beautiful car, but it has a strong character and this comes from the different proportions. These are other cars that they have a lot of strong character, like the Mercedes Class A, who, if we see the Mercedes Class A, it's basically on the uh, competitor to the Golf. But we see how successful we can make a design who is completely different with the new proportions. Very long hood that they emphasize the big power of the bonnet, somehow, of the engine that's under the bonnet, and a very cab forward uh, position. At the same time, we have the, 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 the Kia, who is a very strong character as well, a car with strong character, and the Lexus Coupe. Here I have given different examples of the modern design, car design. So in all of these examples that I have, I have given up today, we see a lot of uh, elements from the past, because the mind can connect nicely his, his, uh, his uh, values, or uh, he, he can see his values on these on this cars. In the same time, we have some companies like BMW, Volkswagen and Toyota here in these three, that they try something completely different. Are they going to be successful in the future with products like this? I don't know. It's something that we have to see. But uh, we see that not everybody is following just one road. Here we can see some strong examples of uh, differentiation. This is a small presentation I have, give, I, of, I have uh, put to some cars to show that the proportions are what they change. So, the red lines that they define the basic proportions of the cars, and then we have got some supporting lines who, is, who are the blue lines. What I want to show to this, with these uh, uh, slides here, it's basically that what is most important is the red line. When we have the red line correctly, so the proportions are very different and very unique, then the blue lines are supporting the design, but it's something very simple. Finally, we have got two modern products here, the 911 and the Mercedes GT. Both the companies, they are the targeting on the same price, the same customers maybe. And both the companies, they have used pure, purely the pro proportions to be different, but not the complication of the forms. As we see in both pro uh, proposals here, we have forms extremely simple and the proportions are making the difference between them. Closing, I would like to go back some years. Uh, we can say a lot of years. This is only just because the most of you, of course, we are not, you are not car designer, and maybe you don't know the process of designing a car. I would like just to make uh, a small presentation, a quick presentation of uh, the process of how a car, and I have used a car is developed, and I have used the Yaris as an example. So here we can see some sketches, the typical way of developing. 
some sketches with, uh, where they had nothing to do with the Yaris. So when, in the first phase, we explored different ideas with uh, a lot of designers taking part of this competition. Slowly, slowly, we see here on the top right, on the bottom right, the chosen sketch many years ago, 95, almost 20 years ago. And then when we have the, uh, the, the, the chosen design, the chosen direction, then we design, we work on this direction and uh, we make the scale model. Here you see a series of scale models on the top, on the bottom, and the full scale model on the, on the top. So this is the first full scale model that was done in uh, 96. Here we have some other sketches still of the, develop of the development phase. Slowly, slowly, the car is coming closer and clo closer to what, what we see finally into the market. Here we have a series of uh, three scale models expl uh, exploring different ideas for the front and the rear. Full scale model that is, was presented in Japan in the head office. The first show car, it was the first time that the car was shown in Paris Motor Show and uh, Already the design was chosen, and then they have been asking from the top office uh, to change the front and the rear so to present as a show car into the Paris Motor Show. It was so that was the first presentation of the Yaris into the public. Meanwhile, the, produ the, the production car was still going on as, a, as development, and this is the final production car that it was done in Japan. Okay, and that was done in 97, as you can see on the number plate. Okay, so that's my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay. Don't go anywhere. Thank you. Where are you going? Don't go We're away. going to interrogate you right now. Okay, Don't interrogation. All right. Yeah. Well. <laughs> So now it's, uh, we're going to proceed to the question and answer session. I would like to ask uh, our moderator, Eleni Samara from Design Toolkit team. Please, Eleni, come to the stage. And also, I would like to remind to the people who are, who are watching us right now through live media that they can ask, they can ask also their questions uh, in the Twitter. There is hashtag. Why at GR? We are expecting your questions and also you can participate in this uh, session. You can ask questions to Sotiris. Where are you? Oh, here you are. Okay. Hello, Mr. Kovmaina. Thank you very much, Mr. Kovo, for a very interesting presentation. I will begin the conversation with some questions that I have been asking for Mr. Kovo. Στα αγγλικά και βεβαίω μετά θα δεχτούμε ερωτήσει από το κοινό. Ε, μπορείτε να κάνετε τι ερωτήσει στα ελληνικά, αν θέλετε, και θα τι μεταφράζω εγώ. So, Mr. Kovals, thank you for a very inspiring and interesting speech. Um, you mentioned that you studied sociology. Uh, so, I was wondering how that knowledge um, either contributes or perhaps even invades or interferes with your creative process. Um. Sociology is a, is a science that is uh, examining the relationship between the people. And uh, this is very, very important because, as I said before to the presentation, uh, we are facing the people, basically. We are designing for the people. That's very important. So we have to understand the people. And uh, to understand the people, uh, how the mind is thinking. That's what I try to explain on my first uh, part of the presentation here that I feel it's for me is the most uh, the most important. So so somehow sociology is a study that uh, it applied to everybody. Mm -hmm. It's not only for designers. It's uh, of course it's very very useful because we try to understand the people and uh, to connect to to understand how the people are thinking 
about one product. So we say, okay, this is a beautiful car or beautiful chair or whatever, beautiful, let's say, or ugly as well. But how, is, how this happen? It's not, it's not an automatic. We think that it's an automatic process that something is coming from inside us. It's not at all something that's coming from inside us. It's a pure calculation that happens in our own mind, inside our own mind. So we have some values, and in base of these values, we make a judgment. So then we, as designers, we have to understand which are these values that they have the plus in front, that means that they have a positive meaning. If we understand them, and then it's not easy, but it's very difficult, but anyway, but if we understand this, like harmony, elegance, uh, dynamic, these are basic values that the most of the people, they are giving a positive, they have a positive image. So for us as designers, it is a word to find these values and to give a three-dimensional to them. Because the customer cannot understand. The customer cannot create, cannot design somehow. We, are, we have to give a three-dimensional to his own dreams and to his own, to his own values. I think this is a, a very important uh, element that is uh, helpful, it's very helpful for us to, to, to design products that then the customer will uh, appreciate. Um, this actually ties in nicely with my next question, which is um, objects that are mass produced, like cars, yeah. and especially cars, mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. It could be said that they mean or symbolize something different to every single person. So I was wondering, how do you go about designing such an object and trying to find a common denominator that's not the lowest common denominator? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think this, this question has to be answered in con connection to the first question, because here it's coming to this point. So it doesn't matter where uh, your age somehow, you know, because the, a car, uh, it's... It has to be sold from people from 20 years old until 70 years old somehow. Important is the values that these people, they, they judge this car, are the same. They share the same values. And I think that the basic values are not changing from generation to generation. In, in opposite, it's passing from one to the other. So, yes, the young people, all the time, they feel like that we have to change the world and they, they, they try to do everything. And they're doing well because it's their job to do this. It's like the babies when they're crying, their job is to cry, you know. So, yeah, the, the young people, they have to create something extreme different. But then when you go into the process of designing, <clears throat> it is the higher managers that they start putting the rain. And they say, okay, this is good what you say, but we have to make in such a way to be applicable and to be acceptable by many other people, not only from the young people. So I saw before an, an example of the Toyota, uh, Toyota um, uh, the small one, the I, I go, the I go, yeah. And we have seen it's very, very aggressive. Why it's very aggressive? Because it's a specially uh, focus on the young people. And the young people, as I said before, they are much more aggressive. But if you make a, another car that your target is not only the young people, but more general on the line, then you have to apply these principles, say, before of maturity. So it's going to be maybe more watered down, but at the same time more mature. So it's going to be acceptable by more people. So I think it's uh, uh, it, uh, somewhere there is a common ground that they found to, to connect the principles of the young people and the older people, let's say, the more mature people. And somewhere there, the companies, they find the, 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 the good connection and they produce the cars that they are finally liked basically by everybody. A good design, a beautiful design is beautiful on the eyes of almost everybody. Okay. You mentioned, um, sorry, you mentioned before how um, you, know, you have the designers and then you have maybe managers who have to pull on the reins. So that leads me to my next question, which is what is the role that a more collaborative or team effort plays in your creative process? Is it something that yeah. you, know, you do on your own or uh. you do collaboratively or it has both aspects. In, in the very beginning, when we started uh, to, to design a car, it's not so, uh, so much a collaboration. It's more a work of every individual. 
Uh, and then uh, the designers, they are proposing to their uh, managers their, their, their design proposals. The manager is making a, solu a selection of the good ones, according to his opinion or to the opinion of the company generally. And uh, then slowly, slowly, when we have uh, chosen the one design, then the work has become more and more collaborative. But the essence is coming from one person, let's say, from the one that he has designed this car. Then, of course, it's a collaborative work to design a car. It's a very, very complicated object, so we cannot, one person cannot take on for the whole project. It's impossible. But at the same time, it's uh, the, the seed, let's say, it's what is very, very important. So if a car looks like, like this or like this, it's coming from the seed. So then, of course, you have some space that, that's adjusted somehow the original design, but it's very, very important, the, the original uh, idea of, uh, of the young designer or of any designer, let's say. Thank you. Um, now I'd like to take questions from the audience. Υπάρχει κάποιο που θέλει να κάνει κάποια ερώτηση στον κύριο Κοβό. Πριν να συνεχίσουμε όμω τι ερωτήσει στο κοινό, έχουμε ήδη τον κόσμο που έχει αρχίσει και συμμετέχει μέσα από το Twitter. We have people who participate through Twitter and ask questions. And I have a question for Σωτήρη. It's from Φώτη Δημανίδη. Why would a company change the front and the rear of a car? Intentionally for a motor show. Γιατί ε, μία εταιρεία να αλλάξει την, ε, τον προσινό μέρο και το πίσω μέρο ενό αυτοκινήτου επίτηδε μόνο και μόνο για μία έκθεση. Uh, I think the companies are doing it uh, all the time, even today that we're talking, not only a old project like what we've seen the years before. The companies are doing it uh, because uh, they don't want to give to the public directly the, the final. Uh, product. Maybe one year later they, they show, of course, to the, to the motor shows the final product. And uh, they do this because they create an anticipation. They want to create this kind of wait for me, I'm coming. So everybody knows that uh, all the companies, they are proposing the basic design, much more refined, much more strong, much because they have to, uh, to attract the attention of the, of the public, of the journalists, of everybody. And uh, then they tell you, okay, in one year we give you this design. So many people in this period, they don't even buy a car. If they like so much this one, they are waiting one more year. And they say, okay, I'm not going to buy now the car. I want to buy this car, so I'm waiting one year when it's coming, the real production car of this car. So it's, uh, it's technical that they use all the companies today. More and more, I think, even today, even, even more than the past. So it's, it's um, also a, a marketing strategy. Of course, a marketing right? strategy. To create yeah, yeah, yeah. anticipation about your actual design. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Because a, a show car is costing a lot of money. It's not something they are doing only for fun. Usually they are doing it because they, they have a strategy behind and they believe in this strategy, the correct one, and it seems like it's working, this strategy. Έχουμε κάποιες ερωτήσεις από το κοινό για τον κύριο Κοβό. Όχι, γιατί, συγγνώμη, μην και τα φωτά. Παρακαλώ, ε, μπορούμε να έχουμε ένα μικρόφωνο. Ναι, γεια σας, λέγομαι Γιώργος Γιαννικόπουλος, είμαι industrial designer. Uh, I will speak in English. I would like to ask uh, Sotiris what other uh, disciplines of design are involved in the, in the car design process, even not in the first stage, but in, in the mature stage. Are there any graphic designers, UX designers, or interior designers yeah, of uh, course. involved there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I was explaining to you only before, only the process of the exterior design. Of course, uh, there are the interior designers that they are doing uh, the same job, the same process as well, and the same importance like the exterior design as well. Uh, uh, the good thing is like, uh, it should be the designer, when he starts working, he's working uh, closely with uh, engineers, because engineers, the first thing that they produce is a package. That means like uh, this is the length of the car, the width of the car, the height. Uh, here we put four people inside or five, I don't know, this is the engine bay, etc., etc. So the designer, when he's designing, in the beginning he's making free sketches, so everything is free. Uh, important is the concept, important is the basic idea. But uh, later, slowly, slowly, and here is coming the experience of the designers, 
when uh, you continue the development of, the, of your idea, then you start putting in consideration all of this. And as moving is moving even more, the, the process of uh, development, then uh, you put even more hard points inside the design which is given by the engineers. Because, as I said before, the design is not only to look at, but the design has to be producible. And it has to uh, clear a lot, a lot of uh, regulations, a lot of uh, homologations around the world, uh, so different uh, countries, different homologations. It's very, very complicated. So, uh, of course, the, uh, the designer, the more uh, information he has got and the more experience he has got designing cars in the past, he takes automatically all of this uh, in his mind. So, of course, uh, there are many, many other disciplines that you have to understand and you have to cooperate with other people in order to go on and to make the final design. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? No. No, no, no. Yes, I have a lot of people who are talking about it. The design is getting more important for the business world. Έχετε κάποιο σχόλιο για το πώ είναι οι designers σαν επιχειρηματίε, είναι καλοί ή κακοί επιχειρηματίε. Μπορείτε να το εξηγήσετε αυτό. Θα ήθελα να το εξηγήσω στην αγγλική. Βέβαια, το design είναι πιο σημαντικό στον επιχειρηματικό κόσμο. Έχετε μια γνώμη για το πώ οι designers ή τι οι designers είναι όπω οι άνθρωποι ή οι άνθρωποι ή οι άνθρωποι. Ναι, οι designers είναι άνθρωποι. So <laughs> it's a difficult to find a good artist, a good businessman, somehow. So it's uh, it's, it's not very easy to to uh, to make these two disciplines, let's say, to work together. Uh, but uh, in a, how can I say, a amateur level, somehow we we try to to do our best as businessmen uh, as well. Uh, but many times it's not easy because. Uh, uh, we have not studied uh, business uh, management or other things. So it's coming more from uh, uh, natural uh, information or the natural uh, collaboration, we, 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 the, the natural information that we get around us somehow. So it's very, very difficult, very, very difficult to, to manage these two disciplines. So would you say it's actually a better idea at the professional level to have talented designers working together with talented business people instead of one of trying yeah. to do both? Yeah, the, usually, the, usually this is what's happening. I mean, uh, I, I, I don't know the details, but I could say that uh, from what I have understand, uh, Ital Design, a very big company, it was uh, Giugetto Giugiaro, a fantastic uh, talented person that he was following very, very hard all the design somehow work, but he had other people around him that they were doing the business somehow uh, work. So maybe this is the, the best combination. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Ε, δεν είναι τόσο πολύ ερώτηση, απλά ήθελα να πω ευχαριστώ. Έχω έναν το γιώτα Γιάρης και είναι υπέροχο. <laughs> Τα τελευταία χρόνια που το έχω αγοράσει δεν έχω μετανιώσει ούτε μια μέρα και έχω κάνει χιλιάδες πράγματα με αυτό και πάντα με εκπλήσει το πόσο καλά είναι οργανωμένο και το πόσο μπορεί να ανταπεξέλθει στις προσδοκίες μου κάθε φορά όμως. Είναι απίστευτο. Very, very happy with it. I've done wonderful things with it, and it never ceases to amaze me how well organized it is and how functional. Okay, okay. Okay, I think that's actually a, ah, yes. Uh, my name is Agil Kival Samirio. I study librarianship in information science. I would like to ask, uh, the, the Yaris model you des designed a few years ago is now iconic. I mean, you see this car, and before you see the back where the name is written, you say it's a Yaris. Would you change this design in, uh, in, for the sake of uh, um, change or keep it the same for the sake of habit, the, the eyes habit to recognize something iconic? Uh, here we are in the third uh, generation of the Yaris already, yeah? as, as you know. 
Uh, I have been uh, working on the first and the second generation, so I know these two generations very well. The third one I did not uh, work at all. But uh, what I can say here is uh, that uh, uh, this depends on the strategy of the company. So, if we go back to the example that we had before, like the, the Mini, uh, we see that uh, BMW, who is the owner of the Mini today, uh, they, they wanted to preserve this image as much as possible. Uh, Japanese companies, they have a different uh, way of thinking, because in Japan, they are uh, people that they want all the time to develop something new, something different. That's the reason that we see big changes from the original Yaris to the third generation of the Yaris, because it is a cultural point of view how, how the Japanese management is seeing all the time the new products. For Japanese, innovation is much more important than the keeping the cultural uh, elements of the car. So it's a, an iconic, but it's an iconic, I mean, uh, they want, of course, for every model to be iconic. This is the target of every, of every company. But uh, in the same time, here depends on the view of every company. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do we have any more questions? Okay, well, um, we've managed to keep this within the boundaries of our original program. You must say. Και στο χρόνο που αρχικά θα έπρεπε να είμαστε. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Σας ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ. Thank you for the invitation. Ευχαριστούμε και σας. Okay.